I've had the PS5 for just about a year and a half now. I'm gonna tell you guys my favorite thing about the console and some things that just kinda suck. Let's get right into it. It's no doubt that the biggest elephant in the room when comparing the Xbox Series X to the PS5 is that there's almost no games on the green side. I mentioned this in my Xbox Series X one and a half years later video, and even some diehard Xbox fans agreed with me. And, and don't get me wrong, I like Xbox. I, I like both consoles. Can we just understand that for a second, please? But when it comes to the PS5, there's a ton of games to play. Whether those games are exclusive or whether they've been updated or they're director's cuts of PS4 games, there's no doubt the best place to play them is on the PS5. If I was able to log my hours on this console, I can guarantee you that I spent most of my time probably swinging around in Miles Morales or just admiring the scenery in Horizon Forbidden West. But beautiful cliche games that every Everyone's played aside. There are some really awesome games on the PS5. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut was phenomenal. Ratchet and Clank A Ripped Apart was really, really fun. And then there's games like Returnal, which is a really action-packed roguelike game that I'm really interested in trying myself. I just felt like there was a ton to play. And even if some of those titles aren't the longest and aren't necessarily the most engaging, there's just something for everyone. And as someone that doesn't tend to pick up new games because I just don't have that much time, I've played almost every single PlayStation exclusive. And it's been an absolute blast, except for Demon Souls. But like that one's self-explanatory. That, that was not fun. <laughs> I don't tend to really like Sony's controllers. I do have smaller hands, so the Xbox ones just always felt a little bit more comfortable to me. But comfort aside, because that's a very subjective thing, I will say that I actually really like the hardware of the DualSense a lot more than the Series X controller. Like it just, it just feels new and it just makes more sense from a console that came out in 2020. You get a touchpad, which is a lot larger than the one that's found in the PS4. You're able to use it for not only typing, but for games that support it for different input methods. The new DualSense also has haptic feedback technology, allowing you to feel like you're actually a part of the game. Like for example, when I play Horizon Forbidden West and I'm using Aloy to pull back a bow, I feel the tension in the trigger and it just makes the game a little bit more immersive and a little bit more enjoyable to be completely honest. Even though you might think that that's a gimmick, it just, it really makes you feel like you're a part of what you're doing on screen. It's also really cool in games like Call of Duty where you're shooting like an AR and the trigger is just kicking back as if you're actually feeling the recoil of the gun. It just, it's a really cool experience and it's something that like, why, why not put in a controller? Like it's just, it's pretty cool. Not to mention one really cool thing about these controllers is they support gyro. And gyro is sick because after playing Breath of the Wild on the Switch and using the gyro controls and then jumping to Forbidden West, right after I enabled them on the PS5, it just made the game feel so much better. Like laying on the couch, you know, and you're just using the controller, just kind of tilting it every once in a while to get yourself that little extra precision. I, I just love this controller so much. Okay, so you have a cool controller and you have all these games, but what happens if you run out of space? No, you don't need to buy a proprietary SSD from Seagate like you do on the Xbox. You can actually just use any supported M.2 SSD given it meets a certain specification. Disclaimer. Okay. I actually made a video about a problem that I had regarding my PS5 and it bricking two SSDs that I own. The video link will be in the description, but after looking into it a little bit more, I realized that this is something that you guys shouldn't have to worry about. The first SSD that I bought turns out to actually be a very problematic SSD and it's the Adata XPG. So the reason that SSD died is because the NAND flash in it is just garbage. The second SSD died to heat most likely due to it being in a TV unit and it actually didn't have a heat sink which is something that I should have picked up off of Amazon third party or something but I wouldn't worry about that at all 
um, and I'll actually put in the description a couple of SSDs that I recommend, as well as even some third-party heat sinks that you can buy if you don't have one on your current one, because I would really recommend doing it because it's not fun to wake up one day and think your console's dead because it won't turn on due to a bad SSD. With that out of the way though, I think it is really convenient to just be able to pick and choose which SSD you want in your system. The price difference for a two terabyte Western digital SSD with a heatsink versus Seagate's proprietary two terabyte drive for the Xbox Series X is 150 Canadian dollars. So if you're planning to have a huge game library or you already do from the PS4 or the Xbox One, I would kind of heavily consider this because that extra 150 bucks is almost like buying a completely other SSD, which is kind of ridiculous. The one good thing about the SSDs being cheaper on the PlayStation though doesn't just end there. We're getting a subscription service. We're getting Game Pass, basically. I'm actually super pumped for this. So PlayStation Plus Extra is going to be $5 extra a month and it will grant you access to a large Sony and even third party catalog. Not only for PS4, PS5, PS3 games, but you're also going to have even classic titles like PS1, PSP, and it, it's just kind of cool. It's, it's nice to see. This is of course Sony's response to Game Pass and as of right now it doesn't really look like they're gonna blow it out of the water but it is something that's really nice to see because it is a prosumer thing. Like it, it is really nice being a consumer and having the option to pay a subscription method to play a bunch of games without having to worry about spending like 80, 90 dollars Canadian on, on all these games up front. Like it, games are expensive and it's ridiculous. So having this huge library accessible now not only on the Xbox but on the PlayStation is just a huge benefit to everyone and it's just super cool. Maybe I'll make a video in depth on PlayStation Plus Extra and PlayStation Plus Premium when it launches because as of right now there's not a super huge amount of details regarding them and PlayStation Plus Premium is just kind of out there right now so when we find out more maybe I'll talk about it at a later date. Now, the thing is with the PlayStation is I don't really have a lot to say negative about it. The things that I have problems with aren't things that I could really go into depth explaining why, but I'm gonna do my best to just kind of go through them and explain them in short form as to why it's not very good. One, the console is an absolute behemoth and it barely fits in my TV media unit. Uh, I actually had to measure this TV stand specifically to make sure it fit the console in it. So if you're buying a PlayStation, just make sure that it will fit what you're putting it in. Otherwise, you're going to have to stand it up on the floor and it's just going to look kind of odd. Two, the fan can also be quite loud under load. which is kind of weird because I don't really hear it on the Xbox. I do have a launch day console of both of them. It could just be my PS5. I haven't really heard too much complaints about the fan noise, but keep in mind, like this is my experience and the fan can be quite loud. Three, there is no quick resume. Although quick resume isn't really a feature that I benefit from because I don't play a lot of first party Xbox games, because there really isn't any. I did see a lot of comments on my video about quick resume and how people use it to just get a quick game in from when they have a, like a lunch break or something. And yeah, it, it, quick resume is a really cool feature. The load times on Xbox are super fast. So it kind of does suck that Sony is lacking that, but it's not like a super huge deal. It's just something that I wish they could have put on. And maybe it's not too late, I don't know. Four, you only get 667 gigabytes of usable storage on the PlayStation the second that you turn it on. That's right, you only get like 700 gigs. and. It sucks because games now are just super large. Even sports titles are like 150 gigabytes. So you're gonna fill it up really fast. You're gonna be looking for an SSD quickly. So I would just keep that in mind when you're buying the PlayStation and just maybe think about adding an SSD to the cost of your overall, you know, your whole PlayStation setup. And last but not least, I feel like this is an absolute crutch to me, but the battery life on these controllers are absolutely abysmal. And don't get me wrong, it's because there's a lot of tech in it. Like you have the haptic feedback, you have the touch bar, you have the LED light on the front of it. I understand, okay? But it's just awful. I'm pretty sure I get about three hours with both of these controllers. And three hours, if I'm playing on a weekend, that's, that's not long enough. Like, 
I, I have to keep one charging and keep them on rotation and it can be honestly quite annoying. That's literally the only reason I have two. I don't have any multiplayer games on PlayStation. I just have two controllers because I'm selfish and want one fully charged all the time. The best way to get around this though is you could just buy a controller dock. Um, you can get one on Amazon for like 30 bucks. So when you're done playing, just pop it on the dock. Or if you sit at a desk with your console, you could just plug it in. I'm pretty far away though because I have a couch and the TV's all the way over there. So that's not something that I can do, but I do just kind of keep them on rotation like I said. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, it would really mean the world if you would like and even subscribe to the channel. It's kind of amazing to me how much support you guys have shown me in the last month. It is absolutely ridiculous that I basically just started this channel and we're already at 100 subscribers. It it just means the absolute world to me. It honestly really does. Making content is something that I do for fun, but it's something that I'm super passionate about, especially tech and seeing the videos get received well and reading all of your comments, which I respond to all of them, by the way. It's just honestly, it makes me feel really good and not in like a egotistical kind of way it makes me feel like you guys are actually taking something away from my content and that's probably like the best thing that i can ask for so thank you guys so much for the support that you've been giving me leave a comment down below tell me how you're doing and let's have a conversation or something i hope you guys have a good one and uh peace out